bitches could never. Little bitch, you could never. Ass busting out the scene like you bitches could never. Little bitch, you could never. Getting all this cheddar like you bitches could never. Little bitch, you could never. Try to get up on my level, girl, you bitches could never. Little bitch, you could never. First off, little bitch, I don't block our body. Bitches jumpin' shit, better swim for they life. Big ratty niggas, yeah, I call them the wife. I pull up, pull up, skirt, skirt, or you host with the pipe. Bitty ass bitches, I laugh in your face. Pussy ass hoes, better watch what you say. Ho, you All right, welcome back. Another episode of On the Scene. Of course, I'm Rob uh, Lee. Uh, at this point, you know who the fuck I am. Uh, we got one half of the dope rap tandem. Uh, we got Cole one in the building from the Trap Girl. What? No, I said Cole one. <laughs> AKA Leon. There we go. All right. Period. <laughs> Period. All right. So let's jump right into it. Trap Girls. Give me the science behind the name. Um. Are you a drug dealer? No. No. I wish. Good job. I wish I had the so balls. No. But no, um, it, it came from <clears throat> hustling, you know, as far as work, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Grinding, I bartended and served for a lot of years and stuff like that. Server. <laughs> Not the drugs. <laughs> Server. Like Sorry. waitress, yeah. But, um, you know, you constantly, you know, you running from this job to that job, two, three jobs, you know, a week, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's the same to me as somebody in the trap actually pushing that stuff because you got so many different things going on and you constantly grind you getting up late you know early rather and going to bed late and then you like you know you're getting that quick money you know what i'm saying so um me wanting to be a business owner entrepreneur i equate that with their mindset they just want to have their own business and so it's, you know income coming in control that whatever so we it's trapping to me you know music is you know the same thing you know the the music the units that's the packs you know and, and the fiends is the fans the followers you know we we got the dope you know what i'm saying so we trying to hook hook them out you know? <laughs> Nah, trap but yeah, girls, some addicts, trap girls. But yeah, you got a lot of, of course, groups with the name girl in it. But mm -hmm. um, we definitely, when we came up with this name, literally like right after that, we was listening to Shondell on Power ninety two. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Shondell Raw Radio TV. That's the family. Mm -hmm. But um, Betty Gang Twins and City Girls drop. They drive where that bag at and drip a lot. So we was like, Betty Gang Twins, who is that? Twins, that means it's two of them. Like, damn, they beat us to the idea. We just they made a name. We ain't even recorded our first single, you know what I'm saying? Let us get in, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, at least we on the right path, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, this different. Ain't nobody really did it since really like salt and pepper and stuff. So I'm like, let's come out as a duo and let's just... But when they when they dropped, I'm like, wow, it's a, a lane open. Let's let's jump on top of that. Um, but yeah, it was dope knowing that we was in the same area with that. But the the difference is, um, us we talk more about getting our own bag. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's nice to be spoiled and bad guy. You know, yeah, of course I want it, but I'm not, you know, out like yeah, give me a forty dollar thousand dollar Birkin period. You know, like nah, none of that. You know, and ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? If Anybody want to give me a forty thousand dollar Birkin? I'm down for that. You know what I'm saying? I'll take it, but um, I'm probably gonna sell it <laughs> and then flip that into a business. I just really want to be, in, yeah, seven streams of income. You know what I'm saying? That type of thing. So Trap Girls is about the hustle. It's about getting the bag for yourself and and be, really becoming a business owner and owning your own, you know, company brand, whatever. Yeah. Now, what's the science behind code? Are you mean? Sometimes, if, if they don't know you. Sometimes, no, not if they don't know me, but if you try me. Mm. You may. Sometimes. So, <laughs> or you just a cold? No, my name <clears throat> is Nicole. Uh oh. So, my mama uh, named me after some French actress on a soap opera back in the day. 
Nicolette, she just left the let off. And it's Nicole. Nobody ever says that though. They say Nicole, Nicole, no Cole, whatever. But in my quest of finding a name, I like had to go into Zen mode and like stare at a leaf for hours because I went through like, oh my so God. How many this names old... did you go through? Man, but you know what I'm saying? I found the one. Okay. She just gave me the Jesus saves face, like, man. <laughs> and he did. He did. I did. So where, where did you start riding? Like, what, what was the what was the uh, the pivot point or the trigger moment? I've been doing music since I was younger. Like, my granddaddy sat me in front of the stereo and played the greats in front of me. Uh, Luther, Patty, Rita, Shaka. Big Luther was small. Big Luther. Well, he, this was before he got big. He was younger, so he was smaller. Then he got big and then he got small yeah, again. Small but. Yeah, it was somewhere in there, but yeah, back in the day, the original Luther. And, um, you know, I didn't understand what he was doing when he was showing me stuff like Grease and, uh, you know, Rocky Horror Show, anything with singing in it and all that type of stuff, whatever. Uh, the Wiz was big in my house, stuff like that, yeah. Um, and then my mom, she was on Soul Train when it was in Chicago. <laughs> Shout out to my moms. Yeah, back in the day. That was the original Soul Train She had some, Chicago, some right? Afro puffs like Rage and the hot <laughs> pants. And she said she had the, the, the stacks. But I'm like, mom, you ain't no fish in them. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, my family, they we sung in church. I, in school, I modeled. I stayed in sports. I'm a Park District kid from okay. Chicago. Shout out to G.I., my second home. But my... My my heart, you know, is shot. And um, in the park district, I learned ballet, tap, jazz, sports, African, you know, swimming, wood cutting, whatever you want to think of. It's like the place you drop your kids off when you got to go to work. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So after school, I run over there, and I'm like, I want to be a superstar. So that's always been in the plan. Yeah, I went to the studio when I was about 15. Um, my friend, Latini, um, she opened up for Twister back in the day. But her mom, Miss Paula, shout out to Miss Paula, she took us to the studio. This is right before Destiny Child dropped, but we thought we was trying to pattern. It's four of us. We were trying to pattern at the like escape and you know things like that. Um, but of course, you know, as it don't, <laughs> everybody was child, you know, yeah. children. And like I want to go outside and I gotta go over here and do this and that. So we kind of like grew up and did our own thing. But it just stuck with me, you know what I'm saying? And I was, you know, doing like little hooks, singing like little crooning, little stuff and stuff. But then I always had this like rapping me while I rap with the music I as a fan you know what I'm saying I never you know put the two together like connected like if I could rap with Yours. the music then right. I can rap mine I just and I was already writing poetry and and you know songs but I was R&B gospel stuff like that so one day I was in the car rapping and one of my guys he was a producer um he was like you should write try to write your own verse so I wrote the verse and Lord, let me tell you, it was trash. <laughs> it was trash. I mean, at the time, I thought it was dope. You couldn't tell me nothing. Yeah. I was like, baby. Yeah, you had to rap it now, you period. Like, oh, I don't want to do that. Period. Oh, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, like all of that. But as I grew, I picked it up, put it down. Because, you know, you got to be an adult. You got to work. You got to take care of home. And right. life happens. Yeah, reality. Like, oh, I'm going to chase these dreams. It's like, uh oh, rent said, hell no, you're not. You're going to go over here and do this, and then on your off time, you're going to figure it out. So I just eventually found a rhythm, and uh, recently I was, like, recording some stuff, maybe 2017, and then I'm like, I feel, like, not, like, like this ain't it. Like, um, it's missing something. So I started searching for another girl to be in the group with me, and I was asking everybody. It got to the point where I was desperate. You, you was taking I was at, I was at work asking my boss like, "Yo, you look good. Can you <laughs> rap, girl? <laughs> it, you don't gotta rap. I will write your lyrics for you. You know what I'm saying? I ghost write anyway. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta get up there with confidence. You know. <laughs> I was on that, but God's will. None of them took the offer. Uh, but I was in the car with my sister, uh, K Mills. Shout out to K Mills. But she, yeah, she was um, <clears throat> rapping along with the radio. It reminded me of when I was in the car with dude. I said, like, I didn't even know you could do that. You know, I didn't even know she could even keep up with it. You know that whole. And she did good. And I'm like, wow. Like, well, uh, you know, I'm looking for a girl. Remember, she's like, yeah, I know, sis. I'm helping you look. I'm like, well, why don't you just be the girl? She like, do I look like I rap? She was like, I'm trying to be a model. <laughs> I was like, a model? I was like, well, some rappers model. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you can mix the two, boom, boom, boom. And we, she just agreed, and it's just been, even though I know I, that was long windy, that ain't what you asked me. Fine, but, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, we clicked <laughs> after that. You know what I'm saying? We started searching for studios and begging everybody. We went from the basement studios to the fireplace in the studios to, like, you know, that whole thing. But what I have um, experienced and what I've learned out of this process that before I got with her, the way I thought um, held me back. Because now I think more about manifestations and having high, vibra high vibrations and great energy around you, um, doing, planting good seeds so your harvest can come back. Um, and also uh, patterning yourself after people who have already showed and proved. Sometimes as local artists, we follow our friends and our peers and we none of us know what we're doing. <laughs> so once I stopped doing that and I said, okay, well, a major artist going to the club through the back door with security and a cameraman. Oh, I'm going to show me a big snigger <laughs> with a security shirt on like this. They going to really be like, who is that? You know, it was the perception we created, the marketing strategy we put into it that developed into something but we hit the ground running with hard work like we had so many shows that we did that i felt like was like practice or whatever mm -hmm. but they were major shows like we was headlining red diamonds uh structure one year i was bartending that structure migos came i was bartending a year later the exact day i was on stage headlining at the same club it was such an amazing experience um club oceans with power 92 um <clears throat> Our first song we recorded with Cannon Boy. Um, he did a song with G Way, a producer song for G Way, and Money Bag Yo, Do It For Me. And then we went to J Dot on the beat. He's uh, done G Herbo, Shauna, like X amount of people, whatever, Cowboy. Um, so when he did our single Whipping, um, which was our first single on the radio, um, <clears throat> I didn't even know he had these people up on his belt. He. Later on, sent me his credentials in an email, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> girl, look at this. You know what I'm saying? He used to be the executive director of Walt Disney on Ice, the musical oh, director. Oh, executive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a former. He just had big stuff under his belt. I learned a lot from him and Shondell. Um, they were, they are like mentors, you know, if you will. But yeah, like it was crazy roller coaster because like we recorded in February, by June, we was right there. We had um, saw a remote broadcast on the live of Power 92 Raw Radio out in Gary. And we was on our way to go see um, who <laughs> we was going to go see somebody. It was, it was somebody. I think it was the baby. I'm not sure. But they was at Club uh, Oh, not Ocean's Club Oh, right? Oh, yeah. And it was like, it's $100 to park. We like, what? Deuce, like what? Deuce 5 2 the rest of them. Okay, shout out, shout out, shout out. And, um, <laughs> yeah, and, um, so, like, we was, like, $100 a park, man. So, we done gotten paid to get in this parking lot, and they, like, well, it's another so-and-such so oh. to get in. And we, like, damn, yeah, we want to pay. We got the money. We don't really want to pay this money because this other, we got to do, we, we need studio time. We still, and mind you, we only going in there so we could be, like, hey, we gonna rap to him in the hallway like right. Nicole Ray did Missy. <laughs> Bitch, we leaving with a contract on North. You know, that's what we was on. We was really trying to get in there and be like, hey, blah, 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 blah. Take us with you. We could be your first girl group. You already popping. You don't need no more like, like let's get some. So, you know what I'm saying? It didn't work out because she saw that and some, she was like, you want to go do this? Because Shondell and them up there, I'm like, yeah, I don't know why we didn't want to go in that club that night, but we did it after we paid our money. So we left back out the parking lot. We flew over there, and just as it was like the last ten minutes, um, we saw K DJ K Caesar. Shout out to DJ K Caesar, and um, we was around that networking and stuff. So Shondell was walking up at the end as we were leaving. I didn't even know who he was because I was. You heard him talk. I mean, not even then, because I was just in my own <laughs> world at that point. I was high. I was like, we just left the Power 92 event. Mm -hmm. Girl, we might have been on, they might have us talking on the radio in the background, you know, just cracking jokes, being, you know, excited and optimistic and stuff like that. So um, when he walked past, he was like, how you ladies doing? And we like, how you doing? And then, you know, it was a pass out there, passing out some um, 
church cards. <laughs> and so I was like, hey, do you know the Lord for <laughs> as your personal savior? I was messing with him. And um, he turned around. I don't know why he turned around. He turned around. You turned around. And was like, hey, guys, what's your guys' names? What do you do? And where are you from? You know I'm Shondell. And we like, we the trap girls. We rap. Nah, 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 nah. And he's like, well, I'm Shondell. And so as he said it, I was like, Shondell, 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 Shondell. And, and then I started getting frantic. I was like, oh, girl, this shot there for that. <laughs> I was like, he broke Chief Keith and King Louie and Katie. And, blah, 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 blah. and she was like, Shondell from Power 92. I'm like, yeah, these, like, he's standing in front of our face, mind you. And we're like, literally. You talk about him in third person. Having a whole conversation in front of his like, face. He ain't even standing there. Yes. I mean, I wasn't jumping up and down crazy, but I was like, girl. Like, yeah. And so she was like, look, we rap. We want to be on the radio. Like, we just started talking and networking. And he took us serious. He was like, take my information down, give me a call, and we could talk, you know, business and see what's going on. They had an artist spotlight or whatever on, you know, Sunday Raw Radio. But it, um, the single actually ended up taking off, and we get weekly play. It's been, I think, over 40 weeks on the radio until COVID hit. And they play it every now and then now. But um, since then, we had two more singles on there as well. But they have been a great bridge, <laughs> a great blessing in our career. And I'm pulling up with the bag and the bows on them as soon as they come in because I promise you, they've been very supportive um, in everything that we want to do. We threw a, a concert um, once year before last. It was a Red Light Basement special. And we gave away four slots to remote broadcast for artists like ourselves to have that same opportunity. So they gave it to us, and I was like, that's what's up. I felt like I was in. I'm like, damn, I'm a professional recording artist, let's be clear. And so, like, they, I thought they was going to, like, local, 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 local. No. I think they played City Girls right before we came on, and they dropped Drake right after us. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was I was that, so pumped. That type of placement is important, though. Like it's very important. My heart melted down into my boot. I was like, you know, who? <laughs> who want me to make them breakfast to my because I owe somebody something around me? <laughs> no. But, like, it was everything. And then other people like Quan Don and, you know, other... I, it's so many I can't even name. Uh, Crunchy Black, we started working with him. Uh, Leland Jones, shout out to Uncle Beats. Uh, heavy hitters money gang like that whole look uh, you know like he really was you know there and, and they you know like let us in you know what i'm saying so hopefully you know we have some stuff coming from us trap girls featuring country Let's see what's going on according to manager what you know we had but it's it's definitely being a roller coaster and i don't know it's it's all those years of me trying to do it and knowing that I was doing the wrong way to finally say, okay, we ain't not doing anything, no contest, no talent show. <laughs> we ain't, like, if you, either you here or you there, like, we ain't doing nothing that, it's not because I think I'm better, it's just, I'm in a different place, right, and and it's in order for you to be taken as that, you have to be that, so, I just start walking differently, and it's just been panning out, like, I'm so grateful. And I'm excited. Like being on here, I was like, oh my God. I'm in. Let me go look up Rob Lee. What's he got going? I don't know what that Rob. Regular Rob from 103rd. Period. Wild Hunters. Shout out to the Wild Hunters. Um, I heard you mention <clears throat> Dallas earlier. Some, uh, me and Sue were talking about Um, How do you maintain that Dallas? Like between real life and industry life? Man. Or is it just all industry life? I don't. I'm walking a tightrope with a cup of tea on my toe and damn piano on my hand. I'm trying to figure this out. Like it's crazy because I could work to you know yesterday. Got to get up, go do this with the you know kids or the family or bills, whatever in the morning. Then by the evening, I got an interview or a show or I'm recording. It's just like a it's like juggling literally. And uh, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's easy. But I just, I suck it all in because I know it's a goal that I want to reach. And I don't, I have worked 16 hour shifts at, for somebody else. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm definitely going to go the extra mile to make sure that I put the work in for this. Especially now that I found the algorithm, the pattern, and the formula, I feel like, and it's really working, I'm not going to let that go. I got to keep digging. Like, I already got this 
the sand moving. It's time to get like down and get it. So I'm just, and I'm not looking to. Let's be clear, I'm not looking for uh, Michael Jackson and Beyonce like no 15, 20 years in the industry. I'm not looking for no open rent free money. Uh, I don't even know. I said rent free money, no Bill Gates or nothing. But um, if I can get a consistent flow of income in in a certain bracket. So the money is not the overall motivator for you on why you do it. No. Um, music is my passion. I was Whitney Houston when I was eight, let's be clear. Okay. My mama cut her dress up <laughs> and wrapped it around my body and put some safety pins on the inside. She put my grandma wig on my head and her lipstick and then she took our egg spatula and put aluminum foil around it. And one of her stocking caps, her, her dude, you know, mm -hmm. and made a microphone for me. And I was around there singing in church, you know, and all that, you know what I'm saying? I just, I knew, like, that's what I wanted to do. But the difference now is music is 80%, it probably even more business, mm -hmm. and then the creative is. 90 business, team So creative. I've been doing creative. I, I've been performing at karaoke, <laughs> open mics, and backyard barbecues for free for forever. And now it's time to to sell this product and take this and make it an actual brand where I can actually, you know, monetize off of it because the music industry is an industry, you know, anybody who's not doing that is just their hobby and their passion. And then there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? They probably got a very lucrative occupation somewhere, but I happen, I so happen to want my lucrative occupation to be my passion. So I have to stop looking at it like, oh, I love music and start being like a shark. Like, what? what's the numbers? Mm -hmm. Where the papers at? Let me see the contracts. Let my lawyer look over it. Like, ain't no do wop to do until I see what's that pen and that check and, and that them to numbers. Play. You got some money, motherfucker? Period. Pay to play. I like <laughs> you did say that. That's the tagline, by the way. <laughs> Plug. <laughs> Every time motherfuckers say pay to play, you got some money, motherfucker? That's the, that's the shit. Every time you hear the word pay to play, I want y'all to drop money in cash tag trap girls. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real though. <clears throat> uh, okay, so what are, besides music, what is, what is another passion that you have that people might not know about? Oh man, I got so many. Like, I think my my calling should have been like marketing and advertising, product development, because I'm always coming up with different little ideas and things like that. Um, but I eventually want like seven streams of income. So I mean, I grew up dancing, taking dance. So I love dancing. It's my first love. Um, I write, so I, I'm working on a couple of books and an independent film. <clears throat> um, I love to read, uh, I skate, I ain't that good at it, but I'm finna get cold. Like, I mean, I ain't gonna say I'm, I'm not that good. Like, I could stay up without falling, but I wanna learn wanna, the tricks. Yeah. Oh, I wanna be one of them be able to skate with the backwards, and skates. I ain't even. You know, that old school Sunday, them old school Sunday skaters. Period. Like, yeah, they be like, yeah. making me look like. <laughs> they do be embarrassing you at the skating rink. I'm though. like this. smooth and shit, like I ain't fail, I'm <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Then they come past and twirl around and do some <laughs> shit with their legs, and you just like, man, I could go eat. And then you skating past like you on the bop, the Jamaican bop <laughs> team in the Olympics. You like, uh, uh, trying to go fast to make you look like you're doing something. Right. When you hit that corner, you like, oh shit. But no, yeah, I, I love it. It's therapeutic. I put my, no, shout out to DJs, no this, but I put my headphones in and I zone out to my like playlist and I'm like just in my own world, just like, and it's great exercise for your thighs. You know, I'm, I got quarantine thick over here. Quarantine thick. Quarantine thick. Cause I had get down. I'm like, oh, we gotta lose this weight. We finna be on, we finna get this contract girl. And I sat in the house when they said epidemic, no shows. I was like, up, oh, where the chicken at? <laughs> Picked that? up that COVID-19. That's, that's, that's what we call it. it, it and it's I was two sitting forms at, of COVID-19. I was sitting there eating and writing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, we, you know, like. Okay. So, I always ask musicians or artists when they come, what is your top three collaborations, dream collaborations, dead or alive? The pressure. <laughs> I'm a good. Can I add a fourth one on the end? Cause I'm. And this ain't got nothing to do with that type of collab. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Oh, I'm gonna just start off with that. I always wanted to dance with MC Hammer, like back in the day that when I was a, a kid, though, and I used to see him on TV when they play the old oh, videos. Yeah, be like, uh, uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get up. I don't even know if I can do that stuff, but I want to <laughs> get up there and try to do that. That's that's definitely a Daphne. Um, Lauren Hill is my favorite. Period. I mean, I love, I love the underdogs for some reason. I love, of course, everybody else's favorites, the tops. You know, you. you but I love under I was but Lauren like it's something about like I was listening to Lauren Miss Education mm -hmm. and hardcore it was in his hand so I was over here like yeah hop on the dick <laughs> and I was like you girl you better get your, <laughs> take that weave <laughs> like I was all bipolar with it but I I felt um, empowered as a woman because I'm like you know it's a male dominated course industry and um. Sometimes it's female and it's just my experience. They own. They be like, <laughs> get that bubble gun rap out of here. We don't want to listen to that stuff. They don't take you seriously unless you're really talking about what they live. And I, I get it now, though. Like, being older in the industry, like, the years that I've spent doing this, I've learned that as a listener, it's kind of awkward when you write a song and a guy like, yeah, my pink lipstick and got my heels on and I'm riding with my bitch. Like they're not gonna not rap them lyrics. At that point. Yeah, they're not, they're not gonna lip. They're not gonna rap them yeah. lyrics out loud. You know, like no, just like a female might not rap what a guy's mm -hmm. talking about. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we do, but <laughs> nah, that's like when uh, Lil Kim first album came out. I like I saw niggas riding around beating that shit, but it was in complete silence. They never sung along with it. It was just like, nah, this bitch. She cold, Joe. And that, that was, was the, that was smart. She still tapped into that market where she was able to pull those listeners in, and that's a hard thing to do so as how, a female. How do you find that balance as far as like lyrical content and, and the 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 standards that the industry has as far as uh, me and Snapple was talking about this as well, like being able to actually rap because a lot of females that's just call it what it is a lot of females put on some skimpy clothes and they get up there they and do. they find the catchiest shit they can say and now you're a rapper and then when you they put do. in a position <laughs> to where you actually have to rap and like show that you have you you have lyrical skills mm -hmm. that's when they get exposed and you never they get exposed <laughs> Millie vanilla <laughs> yeah i mean that's what it is because you impersonating the rapper well, I think they just need to word the titles differently. I told you, see the black shit is moving. <laughs> um, but um, if they come out as an entertainer, you know, you don't need to know how to rap to entertain. You're entertaining. You don't know how to, you know, you're not as great as others. I don't think, I never knew it was a certain, like, level, like, this is it. You know, I look at rap like this. So you got, like, these or whatever, which, let me switch that. These. <laughs> it's no bottom and top. My bad, y'all. So you got this over here all the way over to here. So, like, you got beginner or, like, don't really don't know what the fuck they doing until advanced, fucking I, super advanced rap God. You know what I'm saying? Like, been blessed straight from the gods. But so everybody, it's a place for everybody. Because um, in the world, everybody don't even, they're, the way they, it, you know, receive music is not on the same level. Like, I might not can mess with, uh, you know, a lot, not to say that, but, you know, somebody who rap like a Logic or a, a Twister. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the f they saying. If my brain ain't can't, I just, I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm listening and I hit the beat and stuff. But then if somebody like a Jeezy or a Gucci rap slower and my brain process it, processes you know that then that's my speed so i feel like it's just something for everybody you know what i'm saying and i think it's all dope whether you rap fast or slow um even the content like i i listen to dumb ass songs all the time and i love them sometimes you know mm -hmm. i'm not hating on them because they get in a bag they was able to get a bag off that content like so well see that's that's it's the same as dumb movies saying, like when, when you get into the meat and potatoes of what hip hop is. No, yeah, I like get once it. Once you strip, because people have this conversation all the time about Jay Z, and they feel like people call Jay Z their favorite rapper because he's the one with the B behind his name as far as the money goes. But Jay has the lyrical content and the, and the lyrical acumen to back that up. And once yeah. you strip away the money talk, can like it's it's important to a lot of people that. You, an artist is able to operate in that vein as a professional. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I definitely agree. Um, but if you got a wax song that hit I mean, yeah, it ain't uh, 10 million in a couple of hours. Get your, get your bread. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? saying? Hey. You know, like, I, I don't take it. I take the business side serious, mm -hmm. and I let the creative side be a, a creative form of expression. So if you want to sing about, you know, I'm an asshole, uh, was it Dennis Leary <laughs> from back in the day, you know, Hey Little Mama, Why You Dance So Funky, yeah. uh, oh God, Bust Down, Tatiana, you know, Tatiana. Type, yeah, all of that. Let's be clear, we know that ain't no damn Jay-Z. But Blueface still was successful with that song. He may, I don't know what he's doing now yeah. outside of that, but for some people to have one single to go Anything. that far, yeah. like, I don't ever have to work again. I can take this money and flip it into real estate. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to rap again. I'm not a rapper. Let me quit. Let me go do something else. It's just that. It just so happened. And, and then everybody. Oh, like did, basically. And everybody enjoyed it in the club. So mm -hmm. um, for me, I'm not big on whether, like, it's not so much if you go rap or not. Like, people who can't to rap to me, it's like, they just like, oh, my God, I know you just, like, stop. Just stop. Just stop it. Like, this is a joke, right? But anybody that's above that trying to try, I'll work with it. I, it ain't it ain't got to be Picasso for me, you know? It could be a little nigger rigged. I'll take that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not here because I've been there. Like, we all start off somewhere, mm -hmm. and I'm still a work in progress. I'm no uh, Eminem or uh, Tupac. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? I love him, though. Shout out to Tupac. I know you ain't lying. And so, no, like, it's just, it's fitting in where you at, being great at, at what you are where you're at. And progressing you is the part that you're going to grow. If you keep doing it, you have no choice but to grow. But sometimes the stupid music is what sells. So I might make a dumbass song, and you might be like, they lyrics are trash. You know what I mean? That's what Jay did. When he Literally did the money cash hoes hook. Oh, no, Jay got plenty of dumbass songs. <laughs> he, well, he tells you in the dumbass song, like, what was the one, uh, truthfully, I want to rhyme like common sense, but I did five mil. Ain't rap like common sense. You Period. know what I'm saying? Like, Period. That, but he told you, like, man, I could do that. This is what I really want to do. And once I get to a certain point, as we see now, that's what he does. Yeah, it's, but, you know, he used that as a vehicle to get where he needed to go. And then you have people like Kendrick Lamar, which, mm -hmm. getting back to your original question, Lauryn Hill, Kendrick Lamar, um, I would love to do songs with them. Um, Kim, I know, like, she, but I, it's just the Queen B, you know what I'm saying? Um, currently, you know what I'm saying? I, I would love to do a feature with, you know, like some of the new artists, you know what I'm saying? Your mulattoes, your, you know, yeah. All right, so what would be your top three non hip hop collaborations? Oh, non hip hop collaborations. Every other music genre. I love Sia. Okay. So I'm with her. I like Katy Perry too. Mm. I like her. Um, let me see. Uh, when you ask me them questions, my brain like the wee liquor. Um, yeah, it's a lot of them. I can't even think right now. But uh, da 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 da. Jeopardy music. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely Jeopardy music. Well, I'm gonna say right now, I want to feature with Tim's from the Essence Wiz Kid, Ooh. the young lady on there, cause she was right. buzzing <laughs> on that like that whole little. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, 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 and go like that, but something like that. Yeah, like no, that would be dope to do it collab with her. Um, um, Spice is dope okay. as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, you know. Shout out to Love and Hip Hop franchise. No money, me. But um, she came here as the queen from where she's from. Kind of feel like myself, cause you know we got a little buzz going up here where we at. When we go other places, people like who? <laughs> so, and not that nobody knows her here. I just feel like um, since Patra left, mm -hmm. we were missing that, you know. Okay. 
And so I'm like, where's that? Where's that? Let her, you know. And so now that she's doing all of these great moves and she's been on this platform, you know, and been introduced to us, you know, I'm like, wow, because we got like a disconnect for a while in the hip hop or music industry period. We had like, you know, um, Shaba Ranks and mm -hmm. I can't name everybody. Shabba, uh, Your Wack Shaggy. Clefts, Shaggies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was yeah. a nice little market for that um, mm -hmm. Afro beats, Jamaican reggae yeah. music, but you know so I'm just. She been to the wild hair before. I wanted to go, <laughs> and when we got there, <laughs> it was a line around the corner. Yeah. mind you. This sounds about right. I was like 19, trying to sneak in the club. <laughs> Right. And they pointed us in the direction of the, the Mexican club across the street. So I was in there like, <laughs> you know, song. we snuck into they ain't even got that. Like, they was in there with like family. It was like not a club club. Yeah. It was like kids. Yeah. It was somebody's like wedding or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it was, but it was it was like grandmas, mm -hmm. children, everything in there. I'm like, that's why they <laughs> pointed us like over there. But yeah, no. Um, I, I I would definitely do a feature with uh, those people, <laughs> like for real. And it's a couple of more. I just can't think off the top because I'm hands hanging a lot. But yeah, definitely them. Like, would be nice. So what would you think when someone who doesn't know you? What do you think the biggest misconception of you is? You said I was mean earlier. Oh, I asked if you were mean. <laughs> And I said something sad. Um, I don't know. Um, their misconception of me. It just depends. If I'm with the hood people, you think you better or you bougie or something, you know, that type of thing. And if I'm with the upper crust, <laughs> mm -hmm. then I'm ratchet, you know. So it just depends on which hater I'm around that day. Like how you said you know what I'm saying? I'm or, you know, somebody who loved me, you know. Mm -hmm. But um I really don't care. I, I encourage all people to address their concerns and, and their, you know, suggestions to human resources. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a pretty cool person. I'm a tourist, so Me too. I don't play that shit, but I'm willing to listen. I'm a lover first. And then if you piss me off, you just go too way too far out the bucket. You just fill the bucket up. Right. With, it already now drops. You just went way too far, right? So now I don't hear that. But, like, for the most part, I try to be... Um, I'm a people person. Like I said, my trade, I'm a bartender. So I know how to kiss ass well. <laughs> Snooze and brown nose. I'm like, they used to come to my table with their men, and their men be like, trying not to look. And then they come sit down, and I walk up to the table like, hi, welcome. What are we drinking today? Because I know it's somebody's birthday. they like, no. I'm like, okay, it's okay. We're going to pretend like it's y'all's birthday. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. And then, of course, you know, he be, <laughs> and all that. And then the girl looking like, I'm like, girl, where did you get your nails done? Where did you get those earrings? I love that lace one, you know. And everywhere with flattery. I don't even pay him no attention no more. I am on her. Nutsack, you hear me? And he, and he thanking you because you was about to fuck up his night, so he like thank you. I forget his order and bring her extra shit, and then I'm like, oh, I gotta go get your shit. But anyway, it's about catering to that situation to make the woman feel comfortable. Cause I don't know what it is, but that's it's reality. So I I go in and be like, girl, take my name and call me. Sometimes you come up here without him, right in his face, you know, just cracking jokes, dry humor. But they come back and they end up loving me and. That's the same, the reason why I brought that up, because I apply that to the other stuff. So when people might think that I might be difficult or mean or whatever, when they first may meet me, they like, oh, I thought you was stuck up, or I thought you was this. And then they end up being like, I love you, Cole. Like, you, you, you real, you true, you know, you, you know, because I, I, I don't know, I got a big heart. And that's why, you know, I be mean, because I be hurt, like, why you do me like that? You know what I'm saying? Why you want to hurt me? I, I hit your bag, you know what I'm saying? Not me, <laughs> over here eating grass, mad at my bitch. You wanna come over there with the red shit, come out, <laughs> run your ass up, like. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, I definitely thank you for chopping. Ba 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 ba. What she do? Um, but like we do for all guests that come here, we got a nice shirt for you and a COVID oh. mask because you gotta be protected out here in this world. You okay. Be out here. I'm going to make a shirt out of this later.
No, I'm just playing. That's this dope. Definitely mask up or vax up, whichever is your choice. Don't ask me what's mad, none of your business. But check this out. Kylie Irving voice. Yeah, I got a lot of different voices. I like being like just. I don't want people to be like she programmed. Here she come with this this record label image. Like she like, I'm sitting here all trying to mm. suck my stomach in. Like nah, like I'm human. Y'all human. Listen to my music. I'm listen to it with you. We both gonna, gonna feel good. Yourself, we gonna, gonna feel good. To go. But shout out to on the scene for this. This is dope. Absolutely. Dope, dope, dope. Hey y'all. We done had another wonderful interview. We want to thank Cole One. We're stopping through one half of the trap girl. Yes. We're going to get them both here next time. Yes. Um, but, as always, it's Rob Lee. We're going to see y'all when y'all watch the next one. It's on demand. Download old Trap scene, Life. Download all of their music. <laughs> the old stuff. At Official stuff. Trap Girls. At, at Official Trap Girls. At Official Trap was, Girls. It's actually going to be underneath you. At Official yeah. Trap Girls, no I, you know what I'm saying? Ice World is the team, get in tune, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, big mm-hmm. things coming. All of that, and y'all know, it's Rob Lee. On the scene, we'll see y'all later. Freak me to this song Bella in the zone Bad little body Bad little body all over my body Make you wanna come up, put your hands around my hip Please don't trip, come take a dip Pussy so good, watch key make whip Body on body, boy I'm naughty Have you ever had a meal over your body? Stretch me out like we doing Pilates Can I pull it out like you come on my body? Bad little body, bad little body all over my body You and I get naughty, say you and I think about it Girl, it's up there, you know I got it It's whatever